Hey everyone, thanks for joining. Today I'm going to show you how to paint a sunset with oil paints. The key to painting a successful sunset is in mixing realistic tones and creating soft transitions between these colours. To start, you'll need a basic primary palette of oil paints, a canvas, some brushes, and then you're ready to go. You can also use a medium like linseed oil to make paint more fluid and easy to work with. I've listed the supplies, including the palette of colours that I use in the description, so check it out if you're not sure what you need. So let's get straight into the tutorial. The first colour I'm painting onto the canvas is a mix of titanium white and yellow. The yellow I use is cadmium yellow. To mix it, I took a large proportion of titanium white with my palette knife, then a tiny dot of cadmium yellow. In the final piece, there's a lot of contrast between the lightest and darkest values in the painting, so I'm going to mix colours with a large value range to create this contrast. The reason why we use such a small amount of cadmium yellow is because this colour has a high tinting strength, so a little goes a long way. Next, I'm going to mix a colour that's a little more saturated, that transitions into this lighter tone. For this, I'll create the same mix of white and cadmium yellow, but this time add a tiny bit more cadmium yellow. I'm painting small areas at a time, creating lots of transitional shades. This way, we can blend a smoother gradient for the sky. This gradient on the left hand side of the canvas transitions from light yellow at the top to a pale peachy orange to a deep orange red at the horizon. To create this gradient, I'm gradually adding in small amounts of yellow and red. The red I use is quinacridone magenta, which is a nice cool primary red. You can also use this colour to create neutral purples in the cloud tones. To create this red colour which sits mostly near the horizon, I added the tiniest amount of ultramarine blue to give it a more purple tone. This also works to neutralise the orange in the mix. Underneath where the sun will go is the brightest and purest orange tone in the painting. So I fill this in, then use a lighter orange yellow colour for this stretch which will appear in between the two clouds on the right hand side. At the moment I'm outlining where the clouds will go rather than jumping into painting the clouds at this early stage. This is because there's a lot of colour contrast between the sky and clouds, and I don't want to switch to painting something too different in tone yet, and because I want to blend all these sky tones out thoroughly without muddying the colours into the darker colours of the clouds. I'm now going to blend out these colours to create the gradient effect. I'm using a goat mop brush to blend, which is the perfect brush for the job because it has ultra soft bristles. This next colour I'm using is the more saturated yellow colour that I mixed. It's okay to block in the colours in pretty roughly at this stage because we'll blend later on. So this yellow colour in the middle transitions to a lighter tone at the top of the painting, which is an off-white. I'm using a pretty stiff brush now to get all these colours down and using sweeping motions to fill the colours in quickly. I've dipped my brush in the lighter more yellow-orange tone to make a transition between this ultra-light luminous yellow and the red colour beneath, so that they don't look like two solid disparate shapes. I'm using the blending technique again just to soften all the colours to create a seamless gradient. I'm measuring halfway along the horizon to find the centre point, then dotting in the centre of the sky with titanium white where I want the sun to go. There's variation in the tones above where the light from the sun is passing through the clouds. The edges of the clouds are illuminated with a light yellow tone. The further away from the sun the light appears, the slightly more off-white it becomes. Only the centre of the light source is pure titanium white. You can see that there are two clouds either side of the sun covering parts of the brightest light areas. Paint some of that bright white yellow colour just above and below the sun to show the clouds blocking the sun's light. Use the lightest yellow and white mix on your palette to make the colours transition together smoothly. Then, if you need to, you can blend any edges out in the sky to make a seamless gradient. The clouds are dark compared to the sky tones. In comparison to the clouds, the sky appears like bright pastel colours. The cloud mix is purple, so we'll mix quite a bit of magenta, a lesser amount of cadmium yellow to neutralise the purple, ultramarine and a small dot of burnt umber to neutralise the blue. Go easy on the ultramarine and burnt umber as you don't want to darken the mix too quickly. The result will be a deep reddish purple tone. Then add a little white to lighten it. The resulting colour will be the darkest section of the clouds. To lighten it, I'll mix this dark colour with some of the lighter sky tone mixes already on the palette to create soft and blurred edges in the clouds. Thinner wisps of clouds let light pass through. For these tones, I mix a high proportion of the red colour from the horizon of the sky to give the appearance of transparency. Because I'm using the wet on wet technique, the colours are blending into one another, giving a softer appearance on the clouds edges. 
I'm going to blend all the cloud shapes I've created so far with a scope mop brush. I've cleaned the brush of paint residue with a paper towel so it's relatively clean and dry. I'm also making sure to blend lighter colours first so I don't muddy the light colours. To balance the composition to make the clouds appear more symmetrical, I'm going to add a final cloud on the horizon. I'm using the same techniques as before, starting with the lighter colour that's been mixed with the red sky colour, then layering a more opaque looking purple where the cloud has a higher density on top. After blending out the cloud I painted at the horizon, the final steps of painting this wonderful tangerine sky is to add some brighter, more saturated mid-tones, highlights and details. I'm going to paint some light orange tones around the edge of the clouds, which are diffusing the light near the sun. For this orange shade, I mix some of the colours already on my palette. I mix the lighter cloud tone with the bright orange sky shade. By mixing colours that have already been used in the painting, you'll create more harmonious tones and a more subtle blend. Then to finish off, I'm adding some final highlights around the sun. These will be the brightest highlights in the sky apart from the sun itself. These highlights add more dimension and bring more contrast to the clouds. The highlights are yellow and orange that are slightly tinting the bright titanium white pigment. I'm using a liner brush to create ultra thin lines around the clouds, and I've made the paint runnier with some linseed oil so that it spreads further and layers over the thinner paint. As I go, I blend the hard edges out, making sure not to overblend so as not to lose the definition in the highlights. The highlights are a real mix of oranges and yellows that appear saturated against the darker clouds. The sky section is done, so it's time to move on to painting the sea. I'm going to start painting the sea by loosely blocking in some of the broader tones. It's going to look a little strange and abstract at first, but it'll start to take shape as it progresses. The left hand side of the sea is reflecting a lighter area of sky, so I'm blocking that side in with a neutral yellow shade to work on top of. The yellow is a mix of cadmium yellow, burnt umber, titanium white and a little bit of ultramarine to further neutralise the mix. The right hand side of the ocean is darker, so I'll paint a purple tone to work on top of. I'm using the same colour as I did for the darker cloud shade, so that's a mix of magenta, ultramarine, burnt umber and a little bit of cadmium yellow to neutralise the colour. The middle of the ocean is reflecting the sunlight, so I'm going to paint a bright yellow shade in horizontal sweeping motions to simulate wave textures. Reflected light on water usually appears darker than the source, so I'm painting a mix of cadmium yellow that I've mixed with titanium white and neutralised with the smallest amount of burnt umber. Closer to the viewer, the waves appear bigger and zigzag to the shore, so I'll paint the reflected light in broader strokes. Continue blocking in the base colours with neutral yellow on the left and the darker colour on the right. I toggled this tone a little on the right and added in some cadmium yellow to neutralise it further so towards the viewer it appears as more of a warm grey. I'm leaving some gaps near the viewer where I'm going to paint some wave tones. I'm painting the distant ripples on the left hand side with the darker grey I used on the right hand side of the composition. I'm using the edge of this flat brush and I'm painting horizontal lines in organic patterns. The waves slightly swell in the middle then taper at each end and distant waves appear shorter so you can use shorter strokes with the brush to create them. The darkest part of the painting is where a wave is blocking the light close to the shore. To mix this colour, I used ultramarine, magenta and burnt umber to create a purple-black shade. There are multiple waves rolling over one another, and so I'm leaving some space to blend in the lighter grey tone to show where the light is being reflected off the top of these waves. I'm using that same grey tone to outline where the shadows of the wave of the shoreline are. I'm also adding more definition to the waves by adding shadows beneath the highlights with the darkest tone. The greatest contrast in the painting is in the ocean near the shoreline, so I'm just going to add in darker shadows at the bottom of the painting and more mid-tone, bluer shadows in the ocean near the horizon. Painting seascapes involves lots of blending, adjusting and painting transitional tones. So I'm adjusting the colour of the wave at the front to make it lean more towards blue. Then I'm adding some subtle highlights on top with this mid-tone grey. I'm continuing to use the dark blue mix to create ripples near the horizon and the mid-grey for the distant ripples on the left-hand side of the piece. I've created some small ripple details on the left hand side with the darker blue tone, blending it into the mid grey. I'm now adding more saturated highlights to represent reflected light from the sun. Firstly, I'm adding some warmer red tones near the centre of the reflection, on top of the waves, blending it into the yellow tones in the middle. 
This colour is similar to the reddish horizon colour of the sky, with a little extra ultramarine to cool and darken the mix. I use the edge of a flat brush to create the thin ripples. This red tone also appears on the right hand side of the painting, but it appears darker and cooler still, so add a little more ultramarine to the red mix. Next, I'm going to work in some more highlight tones, ranging from bright yellow orange to the mid-tone red. The reflected light on the wave from the sun is showing on these high chromatones, turning the sea into a rainbow of colours. These tones are highly saturated, they're a mix of pure magenta, cadmium yellow and titanium white. Finally, I'm going to add the brightest highlights on the waves directly below the sun where the light is being reflected. This mix is a high proportion of titanium white with a small dot of cadmium yellow, and I'm using short motions with a liner brush to create these small sections of reflections. This adds an extra pop of contrast that makes the piece look finished. Now this is finished, I'm going to wait a few days until it feels dry to the touch, varnish it with gambar and then hang it up. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.